Imagine 60,000 babies taken from their own mothers by the Catholic Church and placed for adoption, many in the United States, often for a price. As shocking as it may sound, this story didn't originate on the silver screen, but one woman's struggle to find her child is now the subject of an Oscar-nominated film, Philomena. Nightline co-anchor Cynthia McFadden traveled with the real-life Philomena to the heart of the Catholic Church, the Vatican, looking for answers. I am very honored to meet you. You might well say this moment, Pope Francis greeting Philomena Lee in St. Peter's Square this morning, has been more than 50 years in the making, as the two locked eyes, both committed Catholics, trying to reconcile one dark chapter in the church's history. Holy Father, it's a pleasure to meet you. We were right there. Philomena's real story and her journey, now an Oscar-nominated film. I've kept what happened to me buried away for 50 years. Philomena's latest chapter started 48 hours ago with her daughter Jane and the movie's writer and co-star Steve Coogan as they made their way to Rome at the invitation of the Vatican. You need to figure out what you're going to say to her. I'm going all blank. Her mission to find closure for herself and help explain why 60,000 children, including her own son, were taken from their unwed Irish mothers and sent by the Catholic Church to be adopted, many by U.S. families, often for a price. The movie tells the story of a naive 18-year-old Philomena who lost her mother at six and then became a mother herself long before she was ready. Did you take your knickers down? Answer, Sister Hildegard, did you take them down? Yes. I didn't know what present was, of course. Did you feel shame? Well, I was frightened out of my life, I can tell you. When she said, you're going to have a baby, I thought, oh my God in heaven. I didn't know how this baby was going to come either, you know. I didn't know anything whatsoever. You literally didn't know how you were going to deliver the baby? No, indeed, no. Her family sent her away to have the baby at a home for unwed mothers. And it was a very bad birth. It was a breech birth. <laughs> Don't let him put my baby in the ground. It's cold in there and it's dark in there. The nuns thought I was going to die. No medicine. No medicine whatsoever. You never got any medicines. You just got on with it. You suffered for your sins, didn't you? But is that what you were told? You were suffering for your sins? Well, according to them, it was. After you'd had your baby, you had to stay in the Abbey for four years in order to repay the sisters for taking you in. Was that a miserable job? <sighs> Was it just? But then we just got on with it because we thought, well, we've committed a sin, a very grievous sin, having a baby out of wedlock, as we were told. I signed the paper to say that I would allow him to be adopted. I mean, I had nothing else. I, where else could I go? We used to ask and ask, can you find us a job outside where we can take the babies? No, you can't. You've got to stay here till the baby's adopted. And that is what happened. In one of the film's most heart-wrenching scenes, without letting her say goodbye, Philomena watches helplessly as her son is adopted and taken to America. <laughs> Oh my God, I tell you, I was in pieces, you know, I just got a little face looking out the back of the car. Steve Coogan read an article about Philomena and the self-described lapsed Catholic decided to try to turn her story into a film. The story I found moving, deeply moving and tragic and it made me angry and it made me cry. So, Philomena, how are you? As for the casting of Dame Judi Dench... Was it your idea to bring her in? It's one of those things where if, whoever you ask in the production, they'll claim it was their idea. Because <laughs> it was such a good one. <laughs> I think I would like to go. And there are She's about three scenes it. in the film where there's very little dialogue. It's just on uh, Judy's face. And it's all about her thoughts, her private pain. And it's very powerful, but you can only pull that off if you've got an actor who has great charisma. You write the story. Coogan ended up starring in the film answer. as well, playing a journalist who helps Philomena find her son. Her faith throughout is a very moving aspect of the film. The character you play, the journalist, is very cynical and skeptical and mm. sometimes even funny about all of it. I think she th thinks what happened to her was wrong, but she's 
she's not filled with hatred. She, well, she has a, uh, I call it a, a serenity and a grace. Um, but I don't want to seem like she's um, St. Bernadette or something like that. <laughs> she's quite an ordinary woman in some ways. I don't mean that disrespectful. <laughs> she, yeah, exactly. She's very down to earth. He learns from her. He learns from her continued faith. Did you feel that you were ever going to be able to live down the shame or had the shame just taken? I didn't. I didn't. And for years I, I still had the shame for years and years and years. That's why I think I kept the, the shame as a secret for so long without telling my daughter and my son. I kept it for 50 years, um, 50 years, and I think there's so many women in the same situation as me. That, so um, you, were, you were in your late 60s before you told your own family. I was getting on for 70 before I told. So it was the desire to find him. It was the desire. I was desperate to find him, desperate. That's all I ever really wanted. Despite all the nuns took away from her, Philomena refuses to hate. You can't go through life being so unyielding. You've got to forgive. You've got to. Just have to forgive. Perhaps her forgiveness made another extraordinary event possible today. The film was screened at the Vatican as part of a push called the Philomena Project to open adoption records in Ireland. I'm getting the royal treatment, Martin. I feel like the Pope. They laughed at the jokes, well, no, but they also got the it. message. I did not abandon my child. Although the Pope himself did not attend, he did send one of his closest personal advisors, Monsignor Guillermo Karcher of Buenos Aires, standing next to Francis when he was elected Pope. Is your presence here today a signal mm -hmm. from, the, from the church, from the Pope? Of course. Uh, the Pope, uh, he knows that I'm here. Do you see the, the Pope in, intervening in some way to make the records available? Think, you do think I so? Think, I think. To open the records and shed light would be a sea change for tens of thousands of mothers and children trying to find one another, like Philomena and her son, who the nuns refused to help. Openness would also be yet another indication. This pope wants healing. So we're here at the Vatican. What was it like to screen the film? I thought it was very emotional. Uh, and it was, it was a very big gesture the church to do this. I was trying to stop the tears coming down and kiss, you know, <laughs> but it was very emotional watching it again. Do you feel it's just you were hurt I think today? so, I really think so, I think they were really listening. She's been looking for him, she's been her whole life trying to find him. Sometimes a film can open hearts and minds in a way nothing else can. Sometimes one 81-year-old woman's story can change the world. For Nightline, I'm Cynthia McFadden in Vatican City.